What's up, Halo fans? Welcome back to another Mr. Woody review. Today, we're going to be taking a look at this guy. This Mega Halo Pelican is the second on my Pelican series and the second to release ever from Halo Mega. This set was released in 2013, came with this awesome looking Pelican and four delicious minifigures. Let's jump into it. Starting off at the front of the build, we've got the cockpit. You'll notice that this one is a little bit different than the previous and has two different hatches. Looking at both of them, they are kind of a yellow tinted color and they do both open up individually. So the top one goes upward and the bottom goes down. An improvement with this Pelican over the original is that this one does fit minifigures in both sides and has two seats, which is good. And you can throw a minifig on there and close it up. It's just really tight, which is one downside here is even with these mega minifigures in the old times, they still don't fit very well. Moving toward the side on the cockpit on the bottom, we have one thruster on each side. They look pretty good and can spin in 360 degrees. Not my taste, but you know, Halo 4. You'll also notice that there's this little thing on one side, on the left side of the Pelican, that isn't there on the right. Now, what could that be? Well, it's a light show. This is one of the features of the set that was kind of a gimmick, but also is actually pretty cool. This Pelican rotates through a few different sounds when you push the button, as well as when you're swooshing it around and playing with it, it will make sounds too, which is pretty awesome that it could do that. The only downside to it having the lights and sounds is that this entire cockpit piece is all one giant piece. So there really isn't that much building to do, it's just sort of placing tiles around it. But it's not too bad, and I think ultimately, works out for something pretty cool that is still working today, which is 10 years later plus. Kind of awesome. Moving back toward the engine intakes, we have one smaller one connected to the wing and a larger one connected to the body of the Pelican. Of course, this is 343's design of the Pelican, so it does look a little bit wonky in my opinion and very heavy and girthy in the middle just because of that intake and as well as it just kind of looks a little odd. But the wing, regardless, does spin around like the original one made by Mega, which is super awesome and can spin around almost 360 like the original, but gets caught on one of the engines. So it gets stuck on one side and can move around on the other, but it has enough range of motion that you wouldn't really need to change anything about it, which is good. The wings on this one are built up using triangular plates rather than those giant pieces, which create a good shape for the wing, but looking around on the back of the wing, you'll notice it's just kind of barren. Unlike the Pelican of old, this one has some thruster pieces to represent the thrusters coming out of the back of the wings. But other than that, there is nothing else. There are no flaps connected to the wings. Heck, the bottom of the wing just looks like a bunch of anti-studs. There is no thruster pieces or anything like that that the original had, which to me seems like a downgrade, even though this is partly due to just the design 343 gave this Pelican. With that said though, they do include some gold pieces on the bottom, which look pretty good and a flap that can move outward slightly, but not that much and then move inward. I don't know why this flap would ever be necessary, but again, 343 design, I don't think this is necessarily a mega thing, but just kind of what they ended up doing. One awesome thing that we get with this set that we didn't in the previous Pelican is an underside section under the wing. In this section, we get this little thruster like we have at the very front, as well as this piece, which can move up to reveal a weapons cache, which is something that we see in Halo 4 as Master Chief is flying around in this thing, but also something fantastic that I'm glad they were able to fit in here. You may have noticed throughout this review that there are a few missing pieces of this Pelican. There are in fact two missing pieces, both of which I absolutely hate. And that is the reason for these empty clips right here. But for the sake of the review, this is the missing piece. This piece is basically a turret, allowing figures to sit on it and is technically something accurate to the Halo 4 game as well. There are a lot of things wrong with this piece, but the main thing is really the clip that it attaches to. The clips that I have have become very loose and very strained over time. Thus, these things have a hard time staying in at all, let alone ever, if I can even put them in. But with them on, you can see how they work. They do turn around, and when they work, they look cool, 
they just fall off really easily. They do fit a minifigure on there too, although one of mine, there's no way a minifigure would be able to be supported just because it can't support any weight at all. Moving on toward the middle of the ship, we have a gun at the back, which does move up and down. It looks good enough and accurate to the game, but as well as, of course, the middle does open. As you open the middle hatch, it does reveal a pretty sizable interior, which I feel like has more space than the original one, which is great. It's a little bit wider, I think. And of course, it still has four seats too. Of course, the on-off ramp does open too. And the space that you have to actually move around in there is a little bit larger than previous. The ramp is the same size, but it just feels like there's a bit more space just because it's a little more open. But really, you can fit about the same amount of figures and everything on it too. Towards the back on the top of the Pelican, we also have this little flap here, which when opened, reveals some engine detail. This is something simple that Mega didn't really have to include, but it's nice that they included, even if it's small, this little detail that just shows that they care about the accuracy and look of the product. The flaps on the sides do move as well. They're connected via bars, but that's just to give the angle they're not supposed to move in any way. Moving toward the back, we have the two fins as well as some sticker detailing with stickers of caution and arrows too. I may not love stickers, but these ones have stayed mostly intact over time, which is more than I can say about most mega stickers. Unfortunately, the back engines, because of the design, no longer have a ratchet piece, so they don't really move other than they do spin about 180 degrees, maybe a little bit more. They look fine, but they are also just kind of lacking in detail too. The thruster pieces, the way they built it on the back, look really good, and they also added turbines in the very center too, so it's accurate. One awesome thing that they did include here though is a big improvement. They allowed you to carry a warthog with it. Now there is a specialized piece which they give you that you have to use in order to carry a warthog that I was too lazy to find, but I'm sure if you scoured the internet, you might be able to find how it works. But basically, it looks like this. With that said, our unfortunate and final issue with this pelican are the landing struts, or these things that drop down in the back when the pelican's supposed to be landing. Adding these onto the pelican was a fantastic idea, and something I'm really happy that Mega did, and continued to do throughout the years after the original. The problem with this iteration is they don't have enough friction. On the right side, mine has a little bit more friction and will stay in place where it's supposed to be, but it's just kind of disappointing that, of course, I got one dud that one side works and the other one just doesn't. But I'm really glad that Mega took this iteration and made it a lot better in the later Pelicans that they released. It's just sad that this Pelican kind of got the short end of the stick with Mega really trying a lot of new things, some of which worked out really well and some of which needed time to make better. With all that said, of course, the most important part of any Halo Mega set is the minifigures. And these minifigures do not disappoint. I am pleasantly surprised even today with how well these minifigures hold up, despite being Halo 4 designs and not my favorite. This set includes a suspiciously familiar Spartan, as well as a Spartan Operator and Pathfinder with this knight they call the Knight Battle Wagon. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be like the Knight King or whatever, but regardless, it's a pretty good looking knight. Starting off with the Spartan Operator, the armor does look pretty good. This is when Mega started to do a bit more detail in their armors with these older style figures. And they did a good job with this one, despite me hating the look of this armor. It just looks so bad. Looks like this Spartan has a mustache and is a Power Ranger from 2009. The next figure is the Spartan Pathfinder, which has the same flaws, but also the same strengths here too. It has a fantastic mold, and they did a really great job at capturing what this looks like in the sort of scale that they were going with and the look of these older style figures. It just looks really stupid. It looks like an armor that would never exist in Halo and should never have been made. Moving on though, we have probably one of my favorite figures of the set, which is a Halo 4 armor that I don't think looks bad, and it's this Scout. But this Scout has an interesting design, one reminiscent of a certain Spartan who shall not be named. I thought you'd be taller. The f did you say to me, you little s Yes, this Spartan is made to look exactly like Spartan Sarah Palmer from Halo 4. Although they couldn't name it Spartan Sarah Palmer, I think because at that point, Mega hadn't gotten the licensing to the names of the Spartans from Halo, which really doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't know why that took so long for them to do, but because of that, this Spartan is just listed as, as a Spartan scout when all the details and everything about this looks exactly like Sarah Palmer. And finally, our last minifigure is this knight battle wagon. This is the only knight that we've ever gotten with its face open. Unfortunately, you can't close the face, but it's something 
pretty cool and something we see in Halo 4. So it's nice to actually have this in figure form. The knight itself looks great with detailing going from the top all the way to the bottom. The blade of the knight is translucent orange and looks great. It has a sharper edge more than the other knights, which are sort of more rounded. And the back of the knight looks pretty good too. We have a watcher in there and the feet, everything is shaped pretty nicely. On the other side of the knight, we also have a binary rifle attached to his arm, which of course can be removed and placed with a minifigure. With the lights off, hopefully you can see that this knight actually lights up. It's a super cool design. And again, another one of those gimmick things that actually worked. When it works, it works really well. And this is just a fantastic way to add more play to a figure. And you can take the watcher out too. So if you do end up taking the watcher out, you can see that it has the light in the back of it. This watcher isn't like a regular minifigure, so it can't really be changed to that. But if you do take the watcher out, you can place a regular one in there and it can be just a regular night that doesn't light up. But the light up feature is really cool and something that I think Mega should try again with some other figures. With all that said, that will round off our review of this Mega Halo Pelican gunship. Honestly, this gunship came out at a pretty good time right off the cusp of Halo 4. Of course, it's a game that I don't love, but I do think there are some fans of Halo 4 who would really like this Pelican and the design. There are some good figures in here and the fact that we got four figures is also awesome. Not only did it try weapons on the sides, but weapon caches, holding warthogs, lights and sounds, and more. I think they did a good job with this set. But tell me what you think in the comments down below. And hit that subscribe button so you see the next Pelican review that's going to be coming out soon. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.